Hello, so Piotr, who has the eBay page B-Store, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, there will be a link below in the description, has kindly sent me another piece of kit. Um, he's going to be sending me quite a few bits soon, but I think he's sending it as like smaller separate parcels, so it's easier to do. Um, so, there's um, basically an updated one of these. So, if you're familiar with this thing from older videos, this was the Listons, or however it was pronounced. Um, I can show you the uh, label, Listons, L-I-S-T-O-N-Z. There's the label for it, if you can read that through the packet. I'm afraid the lighting won't be ideal in here because I haven't got all that much space at the moment to set up the softbox light. But basically, I think it was a couple of years ago, he sent me this, and this is a really good cold weather um, piece of gear. It's basically like both a polyester and quilted sort of piece of fabric, um, sort of trousers on the top, and it's designed for extreme cold, cold weather conditions. So you can wear as little or as much clothing underneath it as you want, depending on how cold it is, and it's designed to keep you really, really warm. And it's got camo patterns on, which is always great. Um, so that one's very good, but he was telling me there's actually apparently an even better design of them out now. Um, so this one is in pretty much a multicam kind of copy. I'm trying to remember what their actual name for it was, but basically, just think of it as the multicam one. This one's actually in Ukraine's um, kind of pixel camo, which, as much as it might look like UCP off the top of it, it is actually a better colour palette than UCP, because it is a kind of green and brown colour palette. So colour palette wise, they're both quite similar, but this one's like a multicam or MTP sort of colour palette. That one is obviously like the pixel one. So what I'm going to do is try and carefully open this, so I've got my knife, so I can hopefully just cut some of the sellotape on the packet without ripping anything. There we go, there's that bit. And I think that bit is coming off on its own. Now let's do this bit. There we go, there's that bit. And let's find the next bit of sellotape now. Because these things are always harder to repackage if you ever want to do it. I doubt I'll get it back to this size again in the little bag. Um, but yeah, let me get this one. And what I want to do on this video that will be interesting is once I've shown you sort of what this is on camera, what I want to do is then get the flear out and see how good these are blocking body heat. Because I reckon these would actually hide you from the flare pretty effectively. Because obviously a flare sees temperatures. If you're wearing a really good cold weather suit, the idea is it traps the heat inside it. It doesn't let heat through. So the reason you can see people very easily in conventional clothes with a flear on is that the clothes aren't trapping much of your body heat. It's why people's faces and hands are still brighter than the rest of their body on the flare. With something like this on, you should appear much closer to background temperatures. So here we go, here's the big bag. So apparently this is size 2 extra large, he's asked me for my sizes, so hopefully this fits. Because if somebody asked me what size am I, I'm certainly not too extra large. But, you know, whatever it might just be. They have a weird sizing guide, but let's have a look. So, I think he has these in quite a few different camo patterns and all that in. Whether or not there's differences of pocket layouts and whatever else, I'm not sure. But I will get this bag open, which is proving a bit more difficult than it would first seem. Because again, one of those bags with lots and lots of little bits of sellotape holding bits closed. So let's get that. There we go. I think I can finally get it now. So, yeah, let's have a look. So, it feels a very similar material to the other one, but apparently this one is a lot more improved. With um, different materials, so let's have a look. So here's the trousers, and like the other ones, they have a suspender system. And if I check the label, oh good, it is actually my size 56 to 58. And here is the top half. Now apparently this one has a much better pocket system, you were saying, and it should keep you warmer. So looking at the two, they do look fairly similar, although the quilted thing on this does look a little bit better. And the zip. Oh yes, the zip is better. So, I'll get the trousers on first, although I'm making the top one, but I'm showing you that. I'll just get this open. I'm hoping the hood might be a bit better on this one, because the hood wasn't bad on the other one, but it was one of those hoods that you thought, you know, I wish they'd have put a bit of a better drawstring on it kind of thing. But, yeah, so a nice big beefy zip on these, which is nice. Interestingly, it zips at the top and the bottom as well, so you can probably... It's a double zip, which is kind of a clever idea. So let's get that bit out of the way. So yeah, it says bars. I thought it said miles on the other thing, but B A R S. Listons travel extreme. Well, it says Listons travel extreme, but I guess in English that would be Listons travel extreme. There you go. Nice smell to it. 
and as you can see it's both kind of quilted and stuff like that. The thing is with these, if you wanted to wear the top part as just like a cold weather coat, you could do. You don't have to wear it with the trousers, obviously for the really good insulation effect you wear it with both. But if it was just a really cold day and you wanted a nice coat on, you could do that. I don't know I don't do that more often with that, probably because we're only just getting into winter again, but anyway. Let's have a look. So here are the trouser parts. So let's just undo the fly on here. And what I'll do in a second is stop and restart the video just so um, it doesn't go on too long and then cut bits of video off. So I'll undo the bits on the uh, braces. There we go. And uh, let's get these trousers on. So you probably this is going to be below frame, but I'll pan down in a minute. So. Basically, yeah, nice insulated legs. These are actually pretty waterproof as well, which is nice. So, um, you know, you're not going to get really damp and like if you're walking through snow or whatever with this on. So, as you can see, this comes up to here. We'll redo the zip up here. That's there. And then at the back, there should be these bits. There we go. bit like fishing waders, but much comf more comfortable. There's that one, try and do it without folding it round, there we go. So what you can do with these obviously then is adjust these to get them tight. And then they're going to stay up on their own. So yeah, that's pretty comfortable. I'll just pan down so you can see them and then I'll pause the camera. Okay, so regarding improvements to this model, as far as I'm aware this wasn't on the other one, there are two little button-up pockets here, where I guess you could put maps or anything you wanted to in those. Um, there are also the pockets there which button up, because I think on the other one most of these bits were just like the button-up pockets were on the coat. So yeah, there's more pockets on this one, which is always good, because it means you can fit more stuff in there. And if you're wearing the bits individually, you, know, you can do that. So yeah, this is very nice and comfy. It's weird how, explaining like how comfortable this material is, but I think it's a combination of being like a really nice soft polyester kind of thing with um, the fabric. This stuff always smells nice as well. It's kind of kind of got that nice um, rubbery kind of plastic smell and stuff like that. It's new. But anyway, here's the bit that will keep you really warm. Um, the top half. So as you can see, it's basically a coat. So let's get this on. You also notice that it's elasticated on all the um, wrist bits and everything on this, so yeah, that's going to stop your heat from escaping. So, let's get that on. Right, so there's that one. That's that. So, what you would do now, obviously, is just, this is pretty easy to do up, it's not like a complicated NBC suit system. Um, because obviously it's just designed as extreme cold weather gear, but, you know, it comfortable extreme cold weather gear, not um, really kind of uncomfortable stuff. So double zip as said, so put both bits of the zip through, then you zip up the top one. Then obviously what you want to do is get the Velcro across there, get the buttons done up. I think the buttons might be a new addition to this one, I can't remember them being on the old one. Um, so then, yeah, we'll get the hood. So you can obviously, if it's not too cold, you can wear it without the hood, but I would recommend the hood because it keeps your ears warm. Uh, now what they've done that's nice for this one is there's additional bits of Velcro on the hood, so you can kind of have it looser or tighter depending on how you want it. So if we get the zip all the way up, and I'm pretty sure on this one the zip bit goes higher, so the nice bit is if you want to keep your mouth and nose warm, it's easier just to do that. So there's that. Right, now let's figure out how we're going to get this hood done up. I'm pretty sure maybe, oh, and that bit's just fallen off which I guess is like the tag. Yeah, a little bag in itself. Hey, that's a little bag in itself, so maybe you could use that for a mobile or something. It's got some instructions, I guess, in there. But these are definitely not in English, so I think it's Polish. I can't read them. There you go. So, anyway, I'll put that back in there and close that bag back up. Anyway, now let's try and figure out the hood. So I think the hood just might Velcro across itself. So that's on the side of the Velcro. Quite on. Yeah, so you'd Velcro that like that, I think, there. And then you do the hood up. So 
I imagine there's drawstrings yet here they are. So. so as you can see you can make it as tight or as loose on your face as you want. At the moment, let's just tighten it up. So as you can see, not much of my face is visible through there, which is kind of how you want this if you're using it for extreme cold weather. Obviously if you really wanted to you could put a balaclava on underneath it or something like that as well to give you some more heat. But it's up to you how you want to do the hood up. But as I said it's designed to you know keep your ears and everything warm from the wind. So pocket wise on this one there's two button up pockets here similar to the place of the trousers just on top. I'm just seeing it as uh, there's the zip up pockets there which are quite handy. Obviously that means you can keep your hands sort of warm if you wanted to or put stuff in there. Again, if it's really cold weather, you're going to wear this with gloves as well rather than just this. Um, so yeah, I'm just wondering if there are drawstrings sort of thing at the bottom, but I think this one just uses a better bit of elastication at the bottom than the old one, which is kind of good just for keeping that bit tight. But yeah, so what you'd obviously do if you're wearing it without gloves, keep your hands in your pockets like that to keep them nice and warm. Uh, that would work. Um, but yeah. Overall, very good suit. So ideally I'd like to do some camo tests with this, but I might have to wait till it's a bit colder outside, which I had to do with the other one. Because the issue with these is that, um, I don't know how much you know this, but I said it in the last one, that because these are very good extreme cold weather pieces of kit, um, you know, you don't want to wear these anywhere close to the summer. Thankfully it's autumn now, but yeah. You can literally overheat horribly in these if you decide to wear them when the weather's too hot because these are again designed for you know like minus 20 probably 30 odd temperatures um, and as i said you wear more or less underneath it depending on how cold you think it's going to be in layering um, but this is you know one of those very efficient modern things where it's not too bulky but it traps heat very well so anyway now let's get the FLIR out because this is the bit i'm really interested in using the FLIR scout tk how much of my body heat will show up through this this is what's going to really interest me because this could potentially I think hide you quite well from the flare because of how it works I'll make sure I don't have gloves on that way you can see the difference between my hands and um, the rest of my body for example so I was absolutely blown away by this flare footage as you can see I've got it set so sort of yellow is hot it's on the colour wheel preset so you can see my hands and head obviously but you'll notice as soon as I start putting the hood on and doing it up, I pretty much disappear from the flare. Only my eyes are visible, which is the only bit of my face showing. So this could certainly be used, and especially as it has a camouflage platen on it, to hide from both flares and um, obviously the naked eye outside in the wilderness. I imagine there'd be some sort of IR illuminators that may show up the material, but this is really impressive. It gives you an idea of just how well this stuff traps the heat when you appear the exact same temperature as everything around you. So if you're interested in getting one of these either to hide from a flare or for its conventional use of being a very good water resistant and cold weather suit, that's the main reason I'd use it to be honest, just for the extreme cold weather. Um, there'll be a link in the description to this, you can get them from B-Store on eBay, there's a couple of different models available in different camos and everything. But yeah, I'm really impressed with this one. Slight improvement over the old ones, nothing major, but yeah, it, it, the flare footage is just what really impresses me here, just how well it hides you.